Uh, Rainbow Six Siege has been out for a while, so it's time for another one of these in-depth, well-thought-out, scientifically and deeply researched rating systems. That's a joke! So out of 10, how much does this game deserve? Put in your own score in the comments below if you want, and let's see if I can get close to that. First, let's talk about the theme. Rainbow Six Siege is a cops vs. robbers type of game. Cops are attacking the robbers or terrorists, they deploy bombs which must be disarmed and can kidnap people. This reminds me of those moments in Counter-Strike Warehouse hiding out in the hostage room and waiting for the bad guys to come in and rescue the hostages. That was always a bloodbath, that was fun. So now with the game released in 2016 there is destruction, better sound, animations, it's Ubisoft. They like to spend a lot of money on their games and hey it's not Assassin's Creed. So this was a big risk by a big developer which deserves praise from the gaming industry. So let's start this with a solid 8 out of 10. Actually, 9, because there was just a recent deal which made this $15 instead of the usual $60 for me. But it means the operators, the classes in the game take a lot more time to unlock. At the moment, I only got 4. So I can now play the game because I wasn't going to pay $60 for it when I had no friends to play it. Now, at $15, my other Juas friends have also bought it and are playing it. I have heard that there is a balance issue, which may be the reason for the $15 deal to bring in a lot of new people. I'm in Australia and play at peak Australian times, and we don't really have match balance. Our balance is 5 random people versus 5 people all in a clan together. And they like to smash new players every single night and fail to realise they are pushing people away from the game they enjoy. This game has no way of telling that if you are against a full clan or even against people in a party or not. This, along with the match balance, is not a good sign for the game's fairness, so 3 out of 10. But add this to the fact that the game is random with your attacking and defending points. Sometimes you have to defend the kitchen, sometimes the basement, sometimes the top floor. It's random. I understand they are trying to get the most out of each map and I could go two ways with this. The game is bad because if it's random then it's not skill based, but because of this randomness you get more out of the game and it isn't repetitive. If you want repetitiveness then go play Counter-Strike. This is Ubisoft sticking to their Siege theme, the theme of unknown, which is the scariest thing about breaking into a building. They deserve the kudos. Four of them. Seven out of ten. The unknown is what this game is about, and with its sound design, the destructible environment, it is what really makes Siege stand out. It's not EA's frostbite engine, but it doesn't need to be. You learn pretty fast what you can destroy and what you can't, and you can do a lot of damage to a house if you really want to. Big points here, 15 out of 10. But you know what really makes this game unique? Listen to this. The sound design is hard to get used to. There is this new sound propagation system which Ubisoft had talked a lot about. There's links in the description below to those videos. And I understand they had to do something special for the sound. It takes a while to get used to, but it's so you shouldn't have to get used to it. It should hit you as being realistic straight away. I can't explain it. It feels off. It feels wrong. Maybe it's the footsteps which make too much noise when you are listening to it on a different floor, or maybe it's just people walking on the side of the wall which sounds weird. It does not sound intuitive enough, and they must have changed a lot of the realistic sound to improve the gameplay such as footsteps being extra loud when they are on a wall, or little movements seem to echo a lot more than normal. This is not a simulator, but end of the day it doesn't sound realistic and takes a while to get somewhat comfortable with, so it will have to go down in score based on that. 8 out of 10. You know what sucks in games? Ladders. This game has them but it also has a repel system to allow you to walk on walls. Oh no, I fell! Takes a while to get used to though. Would be nice if this could be toggled a little further away from an edge or a longer animation or something, because it did not pass my vigorous testing. Yeah, testing. Oh no! Oh, for fuck's sake. 7 out of 10. Now let's talk about the atmosphere, what I really like in games. The maps are okay. There's decent particle effects around the map, believable night and daytime effects, but no birds. Okay, there are some birds in the distance on some of the DLC maps, but that's not enough. Would have loved to see those birds fly overhead, which would have made the game world feel far larger than what it is. DLC birds are like they just realise the importance of them after releasing the game. That's a poor excuse of putting in that detail. Good that it's in, but it's a band-aid, and an ugly one. 6 out of 10. But there are helicopters up above, which are strangely hovering and have their own sound effects you can hear throughout the building. And that deserves a mention. Stuff it, one point, put it back to seven. But how epic would it have been to approach a fairly quiet building only for the first shot or the first explosion to scare away a bunch of birds who were resting nearby? Oh, I'm drooling right now. While on the topic of atmosphere, I said the particle physics were good, but not great. These are all indoor fights with destructible walls, roof, floors, everywhere. Dust, sand, shell casings should be flying everywhere. I understand why they did this, because they want a good frame rate for the average player, but for this scoring system I've given it points for sticking to its theme, so I have to take some points off for not having more particle effects. The game is clean though. Too clean. 
5 out of 10. Rainbow Six has always had a steep learning curve. Learning the maps is a big deal with this game and it does have a tutorial mode which takes you through various maps and skills. I was going to give this a negative score because of this steep learning curve but once again it's the theme. It's not supposed to be easy charging into a building, that's a good game design. It can't be balanced because defenders need the advantage where patience is king. This is Rainbow Six. They always lean on the side of realism and not balance. I respect them immensely for sticking to their theme, not being pushed away just to make some money. They tried to make a really unique game and for a big developer that's a big deal to me. So 13 out of 10. This is a good game. It's a siege game and that's rare. Ubisoft respected their theme and have the balls to stick to it and still support it instead of abandon it, unlike other developers. If you like first person shooters you should try this game and you can't really compare it to others at the moment. This game could get repetitive after a while but I think it's worthy of at least the new $15 deal. Links down in the description to that by the way. You can find it on Steam. So thank you for watching and I'd like to hear about your own rating system for this game or at least your thoughts on it. Do you agree how I got to the final score or maybe you think it deserves a lot less? Let me know because I would like to see your thoughts on it. Thanks for watching.